so much for joining me today. I'm going to be doing a little practice that I'm calling fluid and it's all just about breaking up areas of tension in your body will work on our uh, sacroiliac area so the back of our hips a little bit will work into the tops of our shoulders will work into our muscles a little bit into our fascia our connective tissue kind of just get the body more mobile and more flowy so you know at the end of the day usually in the middle of the week you start to feel kind of tight and tense and rigid this is to counteract that and make you feel easy and smooth so we'll do a bit of flowing movement and a bit of kind of massaging movement in the body to facilitate that you will want one small prop for this class you'll want a blanket that you can fold up to be at least a couple of inches thick you can use a yoga block but you'll still want a blanket for the end of class so the one thing that you can use is a blanket or you can use a blanket and a block I like to use the blanket folded up kind of thick because it's softer than a yoga block and we're going to start with it underneath our tailbone and I like to have something a little more gentle. If you want a block and you happen to have one, go ahead and use that instead for the beginning of our class. You'll still want that blanket for the end. When you're ready, go ahead and set your blanket or your block down by your mat and lie yourself all the way down to the floor. you get down there on the mat slide the soles of your feet in so your knees are pointing up towards the ceiling and you'll take your prop underneath your hips and you want to make sure that it's supporting the triangular space at the base of your spine your sacrum so it's not like underneath your butt cheeks and it's not underneath your lower back only it's right in the middle right on your tail area that top of your tail And just allow yourself to relax into this, this slight elevation of the hip. Enjoy the little bit of pressure against your sacrum. And you could stay, if you like, right here. This might feel plenty of sensation against your sacrum. If you want a little more, you could extend one both legs down to the end of the mat. This also facilitates a really nice stretch in your hip flexors and your psoas, the front of your body. In either of those positions, you could take your arms up overhead if you want. You can spend a few moments here just allowing yourself to relax over this prop that you are on. Allow the weight of your body to sink into it. Practicing with one leg in and one leg out, you could take this opportunity if you'd like to switch sides or simply to switch position from feet in to feet out if you like as well. And again, just allow yourself to relax into this. Let the weight of your body do all of the work here, kind of just releasing any pressure that has built up at the back of your hips today. Hey, 
taking a few more slow, deep breaths. have not already done so draw the soles of your feet in so your knees are pointing up towards the ceiling bring your hands if you brought them up back down by your sides as you inhale totally relax as you exhale draw your belly button a little bit down towards you start to tilt your pelvis a little bit towards you so you feel like you're almost going to start lifting your hips but you're not actually going to lift them and then as you inhale relax again Exhale, a little tilt of your pelvis, a little contraction of your abdominals. You'll feel your sacrum pressing into the pl blanket, excuse me, and then inhale to release. We'll just do that four or five more times. You can put your hands on your hips if you want so you can feel the movement of your pelvis. As you exhale, your belly button contracts and your hip bones come towards you. It's like you're shortening your belly. And then as you inhale, your hip bones slide away. You can even think about tucking your tailbone into that prop, taking your belly long. A couple more like that. On your inhale again, totally relax. This time on your exhale, draw your right knee in towards your chest. Give it a little hug. You can keep your left foot in, or you can take your left foot long to the end of the mat. Again, see if you can relax a little bit here. And feel free to rock your right knee a little from side to side if that feels good. And then maybe if you take your right knee a little over to the left, it's like a very tiny twist. So you're not going to get very far without falling off your prop. But as you take that right knee over towards the left, you can extend your right arm to the side. You might feel a nice bit of pressure and massage on the left back of your hip or back of your left hip. If it feels good, stay there. If it doesn't feel good, skip it. No, it's, it's not a big twist. My knee is probably in line with my shoulder. It's not very far over to the side. And when you're ready, come back to the center line. Release your right foot to the floor. Draw the sole of your left foot in. Give that knee a little hug. You can stay here. You can let the right leg come long again. And first, you just relax. You enjoy. Feel free to move a little bit already back and forth from side to side. Again, it's just like a little massage. You're just opening up that space back there behind you that, you know, most of us at some point in our lives suffer from pain in our lower backs. And having tightness in this area is a huge factor. Clearing up tightness in the fascia and the deeper connective tissues can really help when you have that achy tight feeling in your low back. Maybe you take that left knee a little over to the right. It's this kind of mini twist, maybe extending the left arm for counterbalance. And you just want to feel maybe a little more pressure on the back of your right hip. A bit of a pleasant sensation. If you're on a block, you might not even go as far because it'll be a more intense sensation than on the folded up blanket. And then when you're ready, bring that knee back to the center line. Now hug your left knee into the chest and then also hug your right knee into the chest. You need to adjust your prop. Don't hesitate, kind of wiggle around a little bit. Extend the soles of your feet up towards the sky. Roll your ankles one direction and the other direction. Flex and point your toes. Maybe you'd like to reach your arms out and roll out your wrists or flex your fingers. Take 
another deep breath here. And then release those feet back to the floor. Press them into the mat. Lift your hips and slide your prop out to the side. Lower your hips to the floor and just rest here for a few moments and feel the space in your lower back. Feel free if it feels more comfortable to let your knees come into a little teepee, knocking in towards one another, feet a little wider. And hopefully your low back just feels a lot looser than it did 10 minutes ago. Separate your knees if you brought them together. Take your feet a little wider than the distance of your hips if they're not already there. You can have your arms to the sides in any way that feels good. And just rock your knees a little bit from right to left. Range of motion that just, again, feels kind of pleasantly massagey to the back of your hips. Maybe a few more times in each direction. To whichever side is more comfortable, you're going to take your knees to that side, roll all the way over, and bring yourself to a seated position. Cross your left foot in front of your right foot if you like to sit cross-legged. If you're sitting in a symmetrical position, knees tented or legs out in front of you, you don't need to worry about which foot is in front. But if you're sitting like me cross-legged, try and cross your left foot in front. Feel free to sit back up on your prop if that feels more comfortable. We're just going to do a little bit of side bending and twisting here. As you inhale, reach your arms up overhead. As you exhale, bring your right hand down, bring your left arm over. Spend a deep breath here. Shrug your left shoulder back. You can look up if you like. With your next inhale, you're going to come back up, reaching your left arm to the sky as you breathe in. As you breathe out, fold back over to the right. Inhale to come up. And exhale to fold. We'll move a bit dynamically a few more times. Inhaling up and exhaling over. And it's not about getting into the deepest side bend that you can get into. It's about just moving fluidly between being bent to the side and coming back to the middle. So focus more, and this applies to the whole practice, on the fluidity of your movements, your ability to flow from one place to the other, than on how deep your pose gets. Come back to the center line now as you inhale, reach your right arm up. Exhale, twist over to your left, drop your hands down, maybe right hand on the thigh, left hand behind you. As you inhale, unwind, just come back to the center line. Exhale, twist again to the left. Inhale to the center line. A couple more like that, and you just, again, move fluidly. It's not the deepest twist in the world. It's that you're just kind of, I like to think of this as juicing up mobilizing your spine, you're mobilizing your hips a little bit as you twist here, getting some space. Let's do one more like this. As you inhale, come back to the center line, bring your arms overhead. As you exhale, actually, I forgot something, reach your arms up, switch the crossing of your legs, right foot in front, feel free to use your hands for that. And then fold to your left, left hand down, right arm over, and take a full deep breath this first time. Again, if you're sitting symmetrically, you don't need to switch your leg. As you inhale, you come back up to the center line. And as you exhale, you go back to the left. And again, focus on just moving smoothly. Even if you only go a few inches over to the side so you can go smoothly, that's better than kind of going really far over here, getting stuck and having to uh, wrench yourself back up. We're trying to avoid building more stiffness and more tension. We want to be like a willow tree in the breeze, just kind of waving gracefully side to center, side to center. A few more breaths here. Maybe noticing this is also a nice little bit of work for your oblique muscles, for the sides of your waist. This is core work right here. Let's do one more. Inhale back to the center, bring both arms up as you exhale, twist to your right, dropping your hands down. This first one, kind of take your time, enjoy maybe a little more depth in the twist. 
and then inhale, just come back to center like you're unwinding. Exhale, come back to a twist. Inhale to unwind. And move at your own pace. You could be moving quite a bit slower than me. Don't go too fast. Don't lose the fluidity and it kind of gets a little bit jerky. One more like this. As you inhale, come back to the center line, reach your arms up. As you exhale, bring your hands down by your sides. Now take your feet a little bit in front of you, soles of the feet together. Feel free to prop underneath your knees if that makes this more comfortable or to sit up a little bit higher again. You want to sit with your feet far enough in front of you that you can sit relatively tall before you start to round gently forwards. And as you round forwards here, Again, it's not about being static. It's not about how far forward you get. You want to prop yourself up. You can put blocks or any other prop underneath your hands if you want. And just move a little bit from right to left again. If you need to be really far forward as you do this, you go for it and you lean forward. But maybe now you start to feel a little bit of movement in your lower back. Maybe in the back of your rib cage. Couple more sways, side to side. And come back to the center line. Take a nice deep breath where you're kind of still. And then gently walk yourself back to seated. Gather your knees in and make your way to your table pose. Hands under the shoulders and knees under the hips. As usual, feel free to cushion your knees here if you would like. And as you come to hands and knees, spread your fingers really nice and wide. Toes could be tucked or untucked, your preference. Shrug your shoulders back as you inhale, relax your belly, tail and gaze come up for your cow pose. As you exhale, lift your belly, tuck your tail and your gaze down, going back into that pelvic tilt cat pose. Inhale, cow. And exhale. Cat. Again, move at your own pace. It's not again about how cowish or catish this looks. It's about the fluidity of the movement, the smoothness of your flow between inhale and exhale. to your neutral spine. Tuck your toes under and start to sit back towards your heels just until you feel a stretch. That's your exhale. And then as you inhale, you come forward and you rock your shoulders maybe a little bit beyond your wrist. You feel a little stretch in your wrist. If it feels better, you can rock your hands a little further forward as you do that so you have more traction. And then you sit a little back and you stretch your feet. And you rock a little bit forward and you stretch your hands, your wrists. And again, you go at your own pace your own range of motion. And you can stay right here, continuing to do this. It might feel just right. Or the next time you come back with the toes tucked under, you can lift your knees and come to downward facing dog. And maybe you pedal your feet a little bit there. Either way, a table or dog, take a couple more breaths. And then walking or stepping, bring yourself to the front of your mat to your forward fold. Keeping your knees nice and soft. Drape your belly over your thighs. Maybe interlace your hands to the opposite elbow if you want a little more traction. So you 
start to feel your spine lengthening. Feel free to sway a little bit if that feels good. Inhale, come into a halfway lift, fingertips to the floor, the shins or the thighs as you reach the crown of your head forward. As you exhale, release. Soft knees. Inhale to roll yourself all the way up to the sky, taking your arms overhead perhaps. Maybe even arching a little back, looking up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, bring your palms in front of your heart. Inhale, reach your arms up over your head. As you exhale, fold forward, sticking your bottom back behind you. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on the legs or the floor or props. Exhale, plant your hands down. Step your left foot to the back of the mat. Bring your left knee to the floor. Walk your fingertips to frame your right foot. And then as you're ready, lift yourself up, bringing your hands onto your right thigh. Press your thigh away from you. Roll your shoulders back. If it feels good, lean a little forward into your front knee so you feel, again, a little stretch in the hip flexors, the left front side of the body. Inhale, maybe you bring your arms up to the sky. As you exhale, fold your arms back, elbows down and towards the back of the mat. Inhale, sweep your arms up and you go forward or out to the side row, feels good. Exhale, fold. One more like that. Inhale, reach your arms up again, pull your belly button back towards your spine. As you exhale, fold forward, plant your hands down, step your right knee back next to your left knee. Make sure your hands are a little further forward than your shoulders and then bring your shoulders over your wrists, low plank position. We're going to do little tiny push-ups. So you don't have to go all the way to the floor. In fact, I prefer if you don't go all the way to the floor. Inhale here, and then as you exhale, bend your elbows, roll your elbows to try to go straight back. And you can lower just a few inches, or maybe four or five, but stay far enough away from the floor that it's not like your nose is in imminent danger of kissing it, and your torso is between your arms or higher up. And then lift back up as you inhale. Exhale, little elbow bend. Inhale to lift. Let's do three more. Little tiny push-ups. And I say little tiny push-ups, but as you're doing these, keeping your elbows in, you realize it's not a little tiny effort at all. Actually kind of challenging. Last one, you're gonna lower yourself all the way down to the floor. Let your nose hover above the mat. Slide your hands back behind you. Lift the center of your chest if you'd like. Also, you can lift your feet. Locust pose as you breathe in. As you breathe out, release hands under the shoulders, push back, child's pose. Hips towards the heels, forehead towards the floor. Take a deep, full breath. As you inhale, come back towards your table pose. Again, you can tuck your toes underneath the rock a little forward and a little back, massaging the feet and massaging the wrists. If you want something a little more vigorous, as you rock back, you can lift the knees coming to downward facing dog. On your inhale, roll your weight forward to plank, shoulders over the wrists. On your exhale, bend your knees, hips towards the heels, roll back almost through child's pose, but then you straighten your legs and you come to downward facing dog. You can repeat that a few times if that feels good. A little more vigorous massage for the wrists and the feet. Try just one of those and then maybe go back to your table variation. See what feels good. Meeting in the next breath or so in table or downward facing dog. Walk or step or hop your way to the front of the mat, coming back to your forward fall. Inhale, pick up your halfway lift. Exhale, pick the legs. Inhale, roll up to the sky. Arching a little back. Exhale, hands to the heart. Keeping it moving, inhale. Arms come overhead. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, step your right foot back, bring your right knee to the floor. 
hands come to frame that left foot. Feel free to use blocks to give you extra traction. And then lift up hands onto the thigh. Press your thigh away. Lift your belly away from it. It should be in your thigh. Space between belly and leg. Relax your shoulders. Maybe you lean a little forward. Stretching the hip flexor now on the right side. When you're ready, you bring your arms up overhead. This is your inhale. And as you exhale, you fold your wings. You bring your elbows down and back. You can open the center of your chest for a moment. Inhale to come up. Exhale to fold your wings. Just one more like that. And then inhale. Bring your arms all the way up. Connect with your core. Squeeze your belly button. And then folding forward. Hands to the mat. Left knee back next to the right knee. Shoulders slide over the wrists. Five little push-ups. And you work to bring your elbows back towards you. If that doesn't happen, you can always go for wide push-ups with your elbows out. Again, don't go further down than about the crease of your elbow if you're doing those military style push-ups. So it's not about getting super close to the floor. It's about maintaining the work in your arms. Exhale to lower. And inhale to lift. And if you've already done five, feel free to just lie on the floor for a few breaths. I'm at two. And three. And four. And on the last one, you lower all the way to the floor and you slide your hands back. You go for locust. You can do just the upper body or you can float the lower body as well. And then maybe this time you go for a little swim and you swim your legs. You can swim your arms. Keep it fluid. Keep it easy. Maybe you can wiggle your fingers and toes. And then release. This time, bring your hands right underneath your shoulders. Press the tops of your feet down. Shoulders back. Elbows back again. Cobra. You can lift higher if you feel ready. Exhale, release. Tuck your toes under and come back. Table or downward facing dog. And again, you can move the little care rocking forward and back, massaging, or moving forward and back between plank and downward facing dog. Or you can just be still. table or downward facing dog, stepping, walking, hopping your feet to the front of the mat, finding that forward fold as you breathe out. As you breathe in, roll all the way up to the sky. Exhale, bring your hands in front of your heart. Take a moment. Looks like we're having some playback issues, so I'm going to check my phone here and see what is happening. Make sure everything is going well. If you're able to hear me right now, you can just continue to breathe. Coming back to the top of your mat, hands in front of your heart. As you inhale, bring your arms up overhead. As you exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down underneath your shoulders. Step your left foot back. Leave your left knee off the floor this time as you frame your right foot with your fingertips. And of course, you can have your hands on props here if that feels better. As you inhale, stay in your lunge. Maybe reach the crown of your head forward. As you exhale, straighten your right leg. Pull your hips back. Feel free to flip your right toes up. Pyramid. Inhale, lunge. Exhale, pyramid. And you just move a little forward and a little backward. Again, it's all about the fluidity, being able to easily move forward and back. Let yourself find the range of motion where that happens for your body. One more here. And then inhale 
back to your lunge. Your right foot is, or excuse me, your right knee is right above your right ankle. And then you're going to take a look at your back foot. And you might like to step your back foot in a few inches or a few inches out to the left or both before you set your left heel down to the floor, giving yourself some train tracks between heel of front foot and heel of back foot for warrior one. As you're ready, you're going to inhale. You're going to lift yourself all the way up. Square your hips to the front of the mat. Reach your arms up. Breathe deeply in here. And then as you exhale again, fold your arms down and back. Maybe open the center of your chest. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, fold your arms down. One more like that. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, bring your arms forward here. Cross your right arm on top of your left arm and either pull the right arm across the body or bring backs or fronts of hands together for eagle. Inhale here. As you exhale, bring your elbows towards your belly as you fold forward, forearms towards your front thigh. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, fold a little forward. And again, you're going to do this a few times. Find the range of motion that allows this to go rather smoothly. Keep your belly button a little bit engaged to protect your lower back. Last one like this. As you inhale, you're going to lift up, you're going to unwind your arms and reach them up to the sky. As you exhale, you fold forward, you plant your hands, turn your left foot to face straight forward and back, and step back, downward dog, or if you prefer, knees to the floor. Table. Inhale, wave forward to your plank. Now we're going to do just three push-ups this time, and you could do high push-ups or back to your low push-ups on your knees. Same thing, though, you don't want to go too low, so as you exhale, you lower down, just body between your upper arms, and then whew, back up. Two, and on the third one, it's sweet relief. You can lower all the way down to the floor. You can untuck your toes, and this time just come for your cobra, lifting the center of your chest. As you exhale, you could go back to child pose, or table pose, or downward facing dog. Take a few deep breaths. Feel free if you are frisky, to keep moving, plank to dog, rocking back and forth, cow and cat. Or if you feel kind of quiet, just to mellow out for a few breaths. When you're ready, meeting in table or downward facing dog. And then walking, stepping, or hopping those feet back up to the front of the mat. Inhale to roll yourself all the way up to the sky. Exhale to bring your hands in front of your heart. Inhale, arms come overhead. Exhale to fold. Inhale, half lift. As you exhale, plant your hands down, step your right foot back. Again, your right knee will stay lifted this time. We start with both feet facing straight forward and back. Fingertips framing the left foot, either on the floor or on props. And I encourage you to use props here if the movement does not feel fluid because lifting the body up can make that moving forward and back a heck of a lot easier because you're less tense as you are lifted than when you're folded forward. Your inhale is your lunge and your exhale is the straightening of your front leg and the pulling back of your hips, your pyramid pose. Inhaling forward. not at all important that your front leg gets straight or you come back to that full lunge where the front knee is over the front ankle in this portion of the class. It's just that you're moving forward and back and you're doing so with as much ease as possible. Imagine that you are requesting of your muscles that they glide against one another of creating adhesion in the muscles or creating 
cohesion. They're working together. more like this. And then you come back to your lunge and you take that look back at your back foot. Your front knee is now over your front ankle and maybe you step that foot a few inches in and maybe a few inches to the right to give you, as you set your right heel to the floor, some space between heel of front foot and heel of back foot. When you feel stable, lift all the way up, find your warrior one and continue to adjust because sometimes it doesn't work perfectly so that you can square your hips to the front of the mat. Inhale here, reaching your arms up. As you exhale, fold your legs. You can lean a little back if it feels good. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold your legs. Last one like this. Inhale, reach up. And as you exhale, bring your arms in front of you. Left arm comes on top this time. You can pull it across the body. Or you can line the hands up, backs or fronts together. This is your inhale. As you exhale, you round a little forward, belly pulls in as you bring the elbows towards it. Inhale to lift, and exhale to fold. And again, it's not about anything other than your gliding here. Imagine that you are as graceful as a hawk soaring on a current of air. I'm trying to imagine that myself. Smooth and fluid. Couple more breaths. And then as perhaps that front leg gets rather fatigued, see if you can keep the movement smooth. One last one. And then inhale, open all the way up. Open your arms overhead. Exhale to fold, hands to the mat. Back foot turns straight forward and back. Step back, table or downward facing dog. Inhale to move yourself forward to your plank. Last three push-ups if you have it in you. Exhale, lower just a little bit. Inhale to lift. Push-ups can be high or push-ups can be low. And it's really only two and a half because on the third one you lower yourself all the way to the floor. And you lift up as you breathe in and you find that cobra or if you're welcome, or you're welcome, excuse me, to find sphinx or up dog. Exhale to release, tuck your toes, move back to table or child pose or downward facing dog. Maybe you like to keep it moving. Be what feels just right for your body. Um, meet in table or downward facing dog. Walking or stepping or hopping back to the front of the mat. Inhale, half lift. Exhale to flow. As you inhale, roll yourself up to the sky. As you exhale, hands come in front of the heart. And here, soften your gaze, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths. Can you feel the fluidity within your body? Can you feel more spacious in your shoulders, your hips? your back. Moving from again rigidity and holding and tense, tenseness to kind of softness, flexibility. And it's a very particular kind of strength that we're working on today. Not just stretching the muscles and the tissues. We're dynamically moving them. So it does require quite a bit of strength as well. When you're ready, bring it to 
down to face the long edge of your mat, standing right in the middle of it. Be a comfortable distance apart. From there, I'm now bring your arms up over your head. And as you exhale, fold all the way forward. Inhale, pick up halfway lift, reach the crown of your head forward. As you exhale, your fingertips stay on the floor or on props, and you heel toe your feet nice and wide. Press free to Padasanasana. Feel free to angle the feet a little bit in or out so that the, your knees feel good and your low back feels good. And then find a bit of a forward fold so where you feel the stretch. For some of us, being up on our fingertips or up on props, we already feel a lot in the back of our legs or our inner thighs. Other people will need to go further forward. you need to be. And even though we're holding a little bit here, we're not dynamically moving, imagine that there's still some fluidity in this pose. You're not getting into it and kind of clenching things up. You're staying really soft. Your knees are relaxed. Your jaw is relaxed. Even your belly can be relaxed at this point. your knees soft. You can walk your hands up your legs. Your hands could come on your lower back or your arms could come out to the sides if you want extra core work. Whatever you decide, make your way all the way up to standing knowing that it's always okay to bring your feet closer to roll up if that feels better in your lower back and then come back wide. Turn your right foot to face whichever short edge of the mat it happens to be facing. It doesn't matter which direction you go. You just want your right foot to face the short edge of the mat. Left foot stays facing the long edge of the mat. Open your arms to the sides, front leg is a little straight. Bump your hips back, reach your right fingertips forward and fold into a triangle pose. You could rest your right hand on your thigh. You could use a block. You could come all the way to the floor if you feel quite open here. Just be careful because we're gonna move our top arm. So if coming down to the floor is quite a reach, bring yourself up a little higher. Keep your right knee soft. As you inhale, reach your left arm as far overhead as you can. And as you exhale, grab onto an imaginary bar and lift it back overhead. Inhale, reach as far as you can. Exhale, pull and roll back. Three more like that. Last one, reaching. And this time as you pull back, you're gonna come all the way back up, pressing into your right heel. Arms are again parallel to the earth. You can release that bar. Bend your right knee, warrior two. As you exhale, turn your right palm up and pull to the back of the room, reversing your warrior. Inhale, come back to the center line, arms parallel to the earth. Exhale, pull to the back of the room, reverse. A few more like that. Again, range of motion might be a little shorter than usual because you're flowing so dynamically and that's completely fine. I'd rather again it be smooth than that you are really far back there to the back of the room. Last one. As you inhale you come back to warrior two. As you exhale you straighten your right leg, you turn your right toes to face the long edge of the mat and again you fold forward to your cross Rita Padasanasana. And you're welcome to stay right here. Just hanging out a little bit, enjoying the stretch. If you want to move a little more, you can always bend a little bit into your left knee and lean to the left. And then come back to the center line, bend a little into the right and move to the right. Come back to the center. And if you decide to do that, feel free to angle your feet as you go if that feels better. Sometimes I like to adjust, turning my feet a little more out for this one. with you or you can oppose with your hands. Maybe your hands go to the left as you lean to the right and then they go to the right as you come to the left. A couple more breaths here. Moving or being still. Being still is 
still allows you to feel a little fluid. Great. Stay there. If you start to feel tense staying still, that's when you start to move around again. One more time to each side. If you're moving that in. And then come back to the center line. Make sure your toes are facing a little more to the front of the mat so they're not too wide so you don't fall over backwards because inhale you find a halfway lift. Exhale, relax your knees a little bit and on your inhale again, hands walk up the thighs on the lower back, or arms out to the side, you come all the way to standing. Your left foot turns to face the short edge of the mat, same thing over here on the second side. Bump your hips back, reach your left fingertips forward, fold to your triangle pose. And I clearly brought my feet closer together. So I'm going to come back and take my feet wider because I've just felt very crunchy. Don't ever be afraid to redo. Just much more spacious because my feet a little bit wider apart. A little softness in that front knee. And remember, you're not going for maximum close to the floor richness today. You're going for that space where you feel like when you inhale and you bring our overhead. It feels nice. It feels stretchy. It feels good. And then as you exhale, you grab and you pull back. Inhale, reach for the other side. Stretch. Exhale, pull back, find strength. Couple more. Last one. And this time as you reach your arm up, you come all the way back up. You bend into your left knee, so you're in warrior two. You can release that imaginary bar so your hands are facing the floor. Inhale here. As you exhale, flip your left palm up and fold to the back of the room, reverse. Inhale to the center line, warrior two. Exhale, gently release. Three more. Your own pace. One, coming back to the center line, straightening the left leg, left toes turn to the long edge of the mat. One more time, fold all the way forward, wide legged forward fold. Enjoy for a few breaths, feel free to move if that feels nice, even just bending and straightening the knees. Or sometimes I'm quite partial to just straightening my arms, lifting up halfway. Or maybe folding a little deeper, sometimes it's only a few inches, sometimes it's quite a bit more dramatic. One more deep breath, whatever you're working on here. And then come back with the fingertips underneath the nose. Heel toe the feet in so they're a comfortable distance apart and bring yourself to a seated position. You could sit on your heels, you can sit cross-legged, you can sit with your knees tented or out in front of you, wherever feels good. Feel free to use your prop. Close your eyes. Feel what's happening in your body. Do you feel movement? Do you feel, literally, you might be able to feel fluid, blood moving in the body. We're going to become quite a bit more still and quiet for the remainder of our practice. See if you can continue to feel that gliding, smooth, fluid sensation within your body. Everything is freed up. All the joints have been lubricated. And everything just moves together so much more nicely. When you're ready, open up your eyes. And go ahead and grab your blanket again. And once you have your blanket, you're going to want to open it up so it is at least the width of your mat, maybe a little wider as well. And then what you're going to do there is you're going to create a roll with your blanket. And you want your roll to be 
relatively firm. So if you're working with like a really wimpy blanket, you might supplement it with a towel. You can see mine is pretty thick. Yours doesn't need to be quite this thick. But when you press down on it, it should give you some resistance. It shouldn't just plop into the floor. Take that to the back of your mat and sit down in the middle of your mat. As you lie yourself down, you want the base of that blanket roll to be right at the bottom of your shoulder blades. And then the rest of your spine is going to arch back. Back of your head can come to the floor. If that feels like it's too far away, you could do a couple of things. You could put another prop underneath your head or you could lower the roll of your blanket. You could just unwind it a little bit. Let your arms come out to the sides. And you could, like I am doing, tent your knees and let them knock in. You could extend your legs long. That might feel nice. You could bring the soles of your feet together if you want. See what feels just right to your body. Until you feel, again, that little bit of pressure against the base of your shoulder blades. And just like we did at the beginning of class, see if you can melt yourself into that firmness beneath you. bit of gentle movement in your body. And keep the nice softness of your muscles. If the word I'm looking for here is supple. Your muscles are both strong and able to help you do all of those push-ups and lifts from downward facing dog up and down. But they're not rigid and hard. They are somewhere between soft and firm. And they're able to move in concert with one another. And we're tight and tense. Our muscles tend to kind of stick together. That's what happens when we're dehydrated. Things get sticky and tight. We want to be hydrated, both literally and a little more esoterically. to place the soles of your feet on the floor with your knees pointing straight up. And then just like where we started class, only we have to prop it in a different area. And then again, you're going to let your knees just sway a little bit from right to left. And you might feel a nice sensation in your back, but you might also feel as you move side to side, a nice massage in your shoulders. In fact, if you want a little bit more massage, as you roll over to the side, you can roll all the way over. I'm rolling to my right, so I'm bringing my right arm over and I'm rolling onto my right side, massaging the whole right side of my torso. And I go back over and I do the same thing. I roll myself all the way to the left. A little massage. See what feels good to you. A couple more times, whatever variation you're doing, side to side. And then whichever side is more comfortable, again, you roll all the way over and onto that side. Press yourself up with your hands. 
move that prop out of the way and you can just set your rolled up blanket kind of beside your mat because you may decide to use it in a moment here. Lie yourself all the way back down and just assess if you're ready to extend your arms and your legs. You feel pretty comfortable here. If there's any other pose or shape that you need or if you want to use your little roll to accessorize your shavasana, you could go back to having that roll underneath your tailbone. So instead of having the folded up blanket, you just place the roll there. It creates a little bit of a lift underneath your hips. You can come back exactly to where we started class. Feel free to extend your legs if you want to in that position. You could take your little roll underneath your knees if you want. Getting a little bit of extra support. It's really nice if you have a tender lower back that little softness in the knees can make the back relax quite nicely. Last option I'm going to give you is taking that roll vertically underneath your spine. So you're lying back on that roll, letting your arms come out to the side. So the roll is along your spine and your shoulder blades kind of straddle it as you lean back. And of course, these are just suggestions. You may find one that works really well for you or you may not and it's totally fine to do your own thing to find a spot for this shavasana just feels really good that's really all that matters so get comfortable close your eyes and see if you can in this time of stillness Still be aware of the gentle, fluid movement within your own body. Take a deep breath in and a gentle sigh out, wiggling your fingers and your toes. As you're ready, roll yourself all the way over to one side to rest for a few breaths before making your way a comfortable seated position for you. Let your hands come in front of your heart. And close here with our deep breath together. In through nose, out through mouth. On three. One, two, three. always your time. Have a wonderful rest of your day.